do with that. So you've sung Jai Radha Madha, that's fine. Any, somebody can read the meaning if anybody wants to. Okay, I'll read it, yeah. So Sri, it's good, good, good meaning to this song because you've, you've sung that, so. You know, Jai Radha Madhav, Jai Kunja Bihari, Jai Gopi Janavallava, Jai Giri Varidhari, Yasoda Nandana Prajjana Anjana, Yamuna Tiravana Chari. Yeah, so Sri Radha Madhav have their loving pastimes in the groves, Kunja Vrindavan. Gopi Janavala means one who attracts and reciprocates loving pastimes with the gopis. Giri Varidhari is Krishna's name in the pastimes of lifting Govardhan Hill. Yashoda Nandan is the son of Yashoda. Nanda means the son and also the name of Krishna's father. So Krishna is also Nanda, Nandana. Brajjana Ranjana means the attractive darling of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. He is always playing in the groves, one of the banks, Tira, of the Yamuna River. Therefore, Krishna is known as Yamuna Tiravanachari. Srila Prabhupada was very fond of this song and sings it just before his lectures in Allahabad and Gorakhpur. Srila Prabhupada fell into a trance after singing the first two lines. And after some time, he came back into external consciousness and said, now just chant Hare Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada says that this song is a picture of Vrindavan. Everything is there, Srimati Radharani, Vrindavan, Govardhan, Yashoda, and all the cowherd boys. So it's really nice to know this, you know, it's a prayer. So we're doing the instructions. So I'm gonna go into Canto 5. Yeah, can you hear me all right, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. And then and see the screen all right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm um, doing this presentation as quickly, I mean, you know, with a bit of a heavy heart, you know, because yesterday my, one of my closest friends and my daughter-in-law's mama passed away from last night, you know, evening. Oh, sorry to hear that. He was, uh, yeah, he was very close to me. We, we played a lot of golf together as well. And, he was retired and he was with COVID, you know, he was in the hospital for just about five, six days. Then he was put into a ventilator just the day before yesterday, you know, just couldn't make it. So he's a bit processing it, you know what I mean? It's just heavy heart. So just kind of going to, anyway, we just pray and Krishna helps us. So this is the Mangla Charan quickly and I'll just start with the Canto 5, the instructions, because a lot of instructions, so we'll try and get them all uh, done <laughs> and very quickly. So, Om Gyana Timirandasya Gyanan Jana Salakaya Chakshuran Miltam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Enamaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Hyam Tadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavamsya Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Vishaka Vitamscha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Prishmanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitana Mapavane Bhyo Vaishnaviya Bona Monama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो कैंटो फाइव वी बीन डूइंग एंड एम यू नो इट्स माइलस्टोन क्वाइट एन अचीवमेंट एंड वी that you know nabi and jenti uh, mata ji and all of her participated really well and uh, so canto 5 starts with this image and i know this is one of the classic uh, bhagavatam set which i bought long time ago and this is a picture on the front there can anybody relate as to what this would be relating to hari krishna to the 11 incarnation of shiva when he gets angry and he he manifested in uh, the rudra that's right this is a time of destruction isn't it yes when he gets angry and all that and that's good yeah and this one i know it's from nabi one of the slides this one is is a rishi who was meditating um i forgot his name now he was he was meditating under the 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 water and then so when he um I forgot his name. Rishi. The uh, Saurabh Muni. Saurabh Muni. Yes. So when when he saw the the fish mating, then he's he changed his idea. Is it he he that he went out and married fifty daughters of a king? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. right. Wonderful. Yeah. I don't know. There's a in Vrindavan. There's I, I often go to when I've been there. There's a place called Ramtal, and I might be wrong. I don't know. Nabi might correct me, but there's a Saurabh Rishi's. Uh, um in ramtal anyway yeah i'm not sure not sure about that i'm not sure there is a tree there is a nice banyan tree and all that and i know it's it's they say it's sort of rishi there cuz i spoke to trikal this morning i saw this ramtal that place and he said it's sort of rishi but whether it's the same rishi is not as this one i don't know but you know that there is a kun there and they've dug up that kun and they find the um the structure of that kun is so different Uh, when he was re revived different types of bricks and all that anyway uh this one anybody relate to this oh this is um uh, again i forgot the name i'm not good at keeping name is yeah, uh, name he's is... chasing the sun the king is chasing the sun is it that's right then he divides up calves up with his chariot or the wheel of the chariot anyway we'll just quickly go through this this one obviously the past time in this there is a story of the rasab rasab and then king jad bharat and so these are all pictures you will all be able to relate to um and uh, jad bharat rescues the deer and then he gets attached to it and he starts to get very fond of that deer and then when at time of death he remembers uh, the deer and then he gets the body of uh, deer and then obviously in his next life he was a is jad bharat and uh, he would face a very difficult time in this situation where he was almost going to be sacrificed by these um so called followers or worshipers of kali this mat you know she demigod she was also concerned that there's a devotee here who's being uh sacrificed so she doesn't allow that to happen she obviously killed all those and saved the deer and protects then afterwards you know he also tells the story of um, to king rahugana when he is made a, made to carry the palanquin and then he had a nice discussion with king rahugana so these are the quick uh, story line anybody want to expand on what he says to king rahugana quick anyway if anybody wants to so he was telling the the king that you are relating to this body we are not this body and uh, he was trying to um he he just wanted to save the king because he knew um, the king was going to to some some satsang and the king was uh, telling him about um, why he is behaving like that so he he instructed the king yeah he said one day you might be the king here giving me orders and all that and then the roles can reverse you know and 
you could be some in my situation and uh, these other cyclic sort of things that go on birth after birth so to be proud of your own position as such and all that so yeah good okay uh this one i mean this pastime comes a bit later on but in this, this one is Vamandev when he Vamande when he went to Bali Maharaj um, arena where he was performing in Yagya and he asked for three steps of land and uh, Bali Maharaj uh, accepted but uh, his guru Sukracharya um, was trying to stop him from giving then as soon as he gave the three steps of land Vamandev um, expanded his body and one step he measured the whole earth the second step he measured the whole sky and the third, third step he asked where to put my third step because you promised three, step, three steps of land. Three so Bali Maharaj said, who is, who is greater? The, the donation or the donor? Then he said, the person who is donating. So he said, put your third step on my, put on my head. That's what he did. Yeah. And in this particular canto, the important part of this was that, you know, Lord Vamandev pierces the material coverings and then the Ganges flow through and then it descends and then uh, there is a whole pastime about how the Ganges comes all the way to planet Earth and then beyond and uh, uh, it goes to the Lord Shiva's and then it goes on to, no, it goes to Dhruva planet, then to Saptarishis and all the demigods bring it to their uh, planets in billions of these aeroplanes. It was amazing how they uh, bring the elder, all the Ganges world all the way to their planets. And then it goes to uh, divide onto the Meru Mount, Sumeru Mount. I mean, it, it just, yeah, that's that's the pastime in this particular canto. So that's why uh, this part part is related here anyway. And then the canto went into talking about the, the creation and there's a Mahavishnu and then Garbhuda Kasavishnu and, and the, the, the whole, the, this, this part here where is the universe and within that is Lord Brahma on a lotus. And then, so we went through all that and that's a quite a detail. This is a wonderful picture of Nabis from the slides. So this, these were all the, you know, review, quick review of the canto. So, and then obviously there is this um, uh, in the, in the galaxy or galaxies and all that. And then the tale of this, what's the name of this constellation sort of thing? Sishumara. Sishumara, wonderful. I mean, name slips out of my mind as well at times. But at the tail of this, where would the Dhruva planet be? Yeah, on, on the tail. On the tail, yeah, that's right, just saying, yeah. So anyway, that's where the Dhruva planet is. And um, okay, so I'll just very, very quickly go through the instructions then, because that's what that we will be covering here. It's chapter one, uh, Prabhupada explains this, yogis and jnanis voluntarily give up all the material opulences to practice their systems of liberation and taste spiritual bliss. However, they frequently fall down because artificial renunciation of material opulences cannot endure. So just to artificially give up something is not very easy. Um, but so we have to have a bit of a superior taste in the spiritual life, then we, we're able to give up the material opulences or, uh, and Maharaj Priyavrat had already tasted spiritual bliss, and therefore he had no interest in any material achievements uh, available in the lower, higher, or any planetary systems. So he was very much attached to I mean, he, he had experienced spiritual taste. That's, that's what we need to experience, a spiritual higher taste. Um, and then uh, we can always, if we are attached to material, we can all dovetail that and convert into spiritual. Uh, then, then that's what bhakti is. So that's, don't have to give up to it. Then chapter two, in connection with the flattering words. So Agni Dara, Srila Prabhupada, you know, explains that, you know, sometimes he was using very flattering words when um, this uh, woman appeared in front of him. He was in the forest. And then when, uh, when one is absorbed in lust and influenced by sex, one surrenders to the feet of a woman without reservations. Then Srimadavacharya remarks in his connection that when one 
engages in joking and talking like this flattery words, like a crazy person, you know, we might end up saying something or doing, and one may say anything and everything, but his words sometimes are meaningless. Chapter three, when the Supreme Lord appears or descends as an incarnation, when in this material world, he does not accept the body made of the three modes of material. So Supreme Lord is beyond the Sattva Gun, Rajo and Tamagun. And we should understand the difference between Sattva Gun and Sudha Sattva Gun. Yeah. So Sattva Gun and Sudha Sattva Gun refers to Sat Sudha Sattva Gun refers to Sattva Gun, which is never contaminated. So it's slightly a step beyond the Satgun. Chapter four, when Dharma cannot be made by Dharma, actually Dharma cannot be made by men. So Dharma to Shaksat Bhagavat Pranitam. Dharma is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just like the Dharma of sugar is to be sweet. And uh, Dharma of fire is to give heat and light. No? So that's already prescribed. So we have prescribed duty as Jiva. And, uh, and so we should understand it's not like man made religions or that can come and go. So Dharma is given by just as the law is given by the state government. And when with King Rus observes good government, everybody felt full satisfaction and did not want anything. This is the perfection of government. If the citizens are unhappy due to the bad government, the heads of government are condemned. So when the Praja is not happy, then uh, the government, the leaders have to take the brunt of it in a way. Um, the chapter five then, Lord Rasubdev's advice is that one who cannot deliver his dependence from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, father, husband, mother, or a worshipable demigod. It's a very powerful instruction that, you know, we have to take responsibility if we are to take up any of these positions in life and be in position. So we should be guiding them on the right path and ultimately try and deliver from repeated birth and death. Um, that's the business of somebody who is in a position of responsibility and depending, people depending on you. So Srila Prabhupada explains further that one should not become a spiritual master if he's unable to save his disciple from the path of birth and death. Unless one is pure devotee of Krishna, he cannot save himself from the path of repeated birth and death. Everyone should be very responsible and take charge of his dependents, just as a spiritual master takes charge of his disciple or a father takes charge of his son. All these responsibilities cannot be discharged honestly unless one can save the dependents from repeated birth and death. So it's a very good instruction, but obviously Arjuna is also concerned that, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, he asks Arjuna, um, that, you know, when there is a Varna Shankar Praja and people don't take responsibility and, you know, the fathers don't take responsibility. These days, the more single mother as a parent than any time, you know, <laughs> well, they've just left, the, the men have just left the responsibility to the government and they run away. Uh, King Arhat, Chapter six, imitated Lord Rasudha and concocted religious systems opposed to Vedic principles. So there are many, many religious systems that are propagated. Uh, and this is the tendency in Kali Yuga. And then he concoct and fall. We should not be falling for these kind of concocted religious systems but they're against the Vedic principles and Sanatana Dharma principles have always been under attack, you know, quite a lot of times and uh, seem to be in, uh, that's the nature of material world. So in Kali Yuga, it's even prominent that these systems will arise and then um, 
but we should be aware of the Sanatan Dharma principles. Following the example of King Bharat's worship of Krishna at Pulaha Ashram, Srila Prabhupada explains. So King Bharat worshiped, you know, Krishna at the uh, ashram. It's stated in Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Falam Toyam Yome Bhakta Pirashati. So worship of the Lord is not at all expensive. So one of the instructions is that we have to keep it simple. If we can, one can offer a leaf or a flower or a little water, some, some fruit. And this is very easy, you know, anybody can afford that. So the Lord doesn't accept any offer, you know, with, you don't have to be so opulent material. You don't have to have any qualifications or material wealth or anything like that. Just love and devotion. In this way, one can be freed from material desires. So we can start our bhakti by just doing simple worship with flower, water. One may not be able to go to Pulaha Ashram, but wherever one is, one can happily render devotional service to the Lord by adopting the processes mentioned above. So just by doing the Shravanam, listen to the Kathas of Krishna, that's where we can start. We don't have to be anywhere. We can be wherever we are, we start our bhakti. And just like the great King Bharat Maharaj in the body of a deer, who was now very careful not to fall victim to bad association, we should seek association of devotees and cultivate Krishna consciousness. So that's important instruction as well, association um, and the bad association we should try and avoid. Um, the influence is a lot. So whenever the devotees are, uh, you know, then we should try and seek out their association. We should note that the modes of passion and ignorance can become so power overpowering and the desire to become very rich can drive one to disobey the injunctions of the Vedas. Just like the decoys who were prepared to kill Jad Bharat, a self-realized soul born in a Brahminical family and who was the best friend of all living entity. He has no enemies. He is no one's enemy. And he was always absorbed in meditation of the Supreme Lord. So such a person, although difficult to recognize at times, but you know, some this passion and ignorance can become very overpowering and drive us to do things that you know we may start to fall, disobey the injunctions of the Vedas. In any case, there was no reason to kill Jarbarth, and even the god goddess Kali could not bear this and she punished the rogues. So, you know, Krishna doesn't tolerate or even demigods don't tolerate insults or anything to the devotees. Chapter 10, the powerful instruction of Jarbarth to King Rahugana. Today you are a king and I am a servant, but tomorrow the position may be changed and you may be my servant and I your master. These are temporary circumstances created by providence. We should always pray, also pray and ask for forgiveness, just as the king does to Jadbar. So when the king realizes that, you know, this person, Jadbar, is an elevated personality and I've offended him so badly, then he asks for forgiveness. And he uh, said, oh, my dear Lord, you are the friend of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is a friend of all living entities. You are therefore equal to everyone and you are free from the bodily conception. Although I have committed any offense by insulting you, I know that there is no loss or gain for you due to my insult. You are fixed in your determination, but I have committed an offense. Because of this, even though I may be as strong as Lord Shiva, I shall be vanquished without delay due to my offense at the Lotus feet of a Vaishnava. So, you know, any offense at the feet of a Vaishnav is uh, not tolerated by the Supreme Personality of God himself. You know, as we know from the story of uh, Ambarish Maharaj as well, when he was offended by Durvasa Muni. Um, Jad Bharat's further instructions to Rogana relate to the mind 
are, are amazing as well. When the mind becomes unattached to material enjoyment, it becomes the cause of liberation. When the flame of a lamp burns the wick improperly, the lamp is blackened. But when the lamp is filled with ghee and burning properly, there is bright illumination. So when the flame is, so like that, flame is compared to the mind here. The, the flame is lit very properly, then there's bright illumination. Otherwise it's wavering and, you know, it causes disturbance. So like that, and, and you know, wandering mind causes havoc. All King, please try to conquer this mind by the weapon of service to the lotus feet of the supreme person, supreme master, spiritual master, or the lotus feet of the spiritual master, and of the supreme personality of Godhead. Do this with great care. So we are advised to be careful and conquer this mind, uh, but we can only conquer it by doing some sort of service to the lotus feet of the Guru and the Supreme Lord. 12, Jad Bharat further clarifies the instructions to the king and establishes firmly the might be King Rahugana, unless one has the opportunity to smear his entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of the great devotees, one cannot realize the supreme truth. And then there are, you know, great stories of uh, great devotees who uh, want to be where great devotees are. And who are the pure devotees mentioned here? In an assembly of pure devotees, there is no question of discussing material subjects like politics and sociology. In an assembly of pure devotees, there is discussion only of the qualities, forms, and pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, you know, this is a sign of where the devotees associate. And uh, recently, you know, I was also listening to Pastor King of Jaipur, in, well, in, in uh, Rajasthan, where he, although he was a king, but he really liked the association of devotees and he would call them and discuss all the pastimes, the Bhagavad Kathas and Bhajans, and he wanted to listen to the glories of the Supreme Lord. And he would invite poets and, uh, you know, even, wherever, you know, devotees have written glories of the Supreme Lord. He wanted to listen to that rather than be involved with so much politics. However, if it, is, it is not a fact that the soul or super soul becomes poor simply because the body is poor. These are the statements of ignorant people. The soul and super soul are always apart from bodily pleasure and pain. So when the body does become sick, you know, it doesn't mean that the soul is also gone sick. You know, when we are affected by this COVID and all that, hopefully people are suffering, but the, the Atma is separate and it's not affected. It's not, COVID hasn't attacked it, the soul as such. Uh, it's the body that suffers the pleasures and the pains. King Rahugana says to Jad Bharat, by associating with you just for a moment, I am now freed from all argument, false prestige, and lack of discrimination, which are the roots of entanglement in the material world. Now I am free from all these problems. So King Rahugana says, you, a moment's association with you has brought about a change in my life. Um, and uh, that's the result, you know, this is a power, power of association, especially with self-realized persons who sometimes are hidden under different guises and walk the surface, earth's surface as children, young boys, avadutas or great Brahmins. So, you know, how wonderfully Prabhupada walked on the earth's surface and, you know, <laughs> people would not have recognized him at first, you know, even they couldn't understand uh, that he was such a powerful personality, but he transformed so many people's lives. We should offer our obeisances to such personalities, so Srila Prabhupada Kijani. 
explains, uh, Sri Prabhupada explains in chapter 14 that since the material world is compared here into the forest, it may be argued that in Kali Yuga, modern civilization is mainly situated in the cities. A great city, however, is like a great forest. Actually, city life is more dangerous than a life in the forest. So when uh, the material life world was compared to the forest, you know, we think that, you know, it's just the forest, that fires can start in it by automatically, there's danger in the forest and all that, but cities, I mean, we live in more cities. So whether a city or a forest, we're all struggling. For us, it is stated in the Vedas, that vignardam sa gurum eva vigachet. When the living entity is lost in the forest of this material world, in the struggle for existence, his first business is to find a bona fide guru who is always engaged at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of God and Vishnu. After all, if he is at all eager to be relieved from the struggle of existence, he must find a bona fide guru and take instructions at his lotus feet. In this way, he can get out of the struggle. So we're all struggling. And so that's where we have to start, you know, seek out this desire. And then Krishna fulfills the desire. As I say, when the student is ready, the master appears. So when we have the desire, then the bona fide guru will appear in our life as well. But if you don't have a sincere desire, then you could end up with bogus gurus. The descendants of Priyavrata are important and are covered in this chapter because according to Srimad Bhagavatam 5139, there are many famous verses regarding Maharaj Priyavrata's activities. No one but the Supreme Personality of Godhead to do what Maharaj Priyavrata has done. Maharaj Priyavrata has dissipated the darkness of night and with the reams of his great chariot, he excavated seven oceans. So some great deed like that, you know, is worthy of mention in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Of these descendants, King Gaya was always free from bodily conception and engaged um, followed bhakti yoga. So he actually followed bhakti yoga. He was a descendant of Priyavrat. So, you know, sometimes the descendants are praiseworthy, um, just like the Yadu dynasty of Krishna's. The fact that Sukhdev Goswami describes Bhumandal and location of planets the location of the various planetary systems was not unknown to the sages um, and flourished in the Vedic ages, according to Sri Prabhupada. And so these Bhumandal and all the other planetary systems were known even before when Shukadeva Goswami was narrating this. So it's from the Vedic time, you know, the, this knowledge is always there. Just because we don't know it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So Tasmat Guru Prabhupada Jignasu Shreya Uttamam. So, eleven canto one who is very interested in understanding the activities in the spiritual world must search out a guru, a bona fide representative of Krishna. From all angles of vision, therefore, the word guru is especially meant for bona fide representative of Krishna and no one else. So, Padma Purana states that Avaishnava Guru Na Shat. One who is not a Vaishnava, who is not a representative of Krishna, cannot be a guru. So obviously, guru has to be a transparent medium to allow Krishna's instructions uh, to, to flow through. Um, and that he's got to be representing Krishna. So Vaishnava, Swapacha Guru. Vaishnava, Swapacha Guru. But a Vaishnav, a bona fide representative of the Supreme Personality of God, a Vishnu, can become a guru, even if he's a Swapacha, meaning, you know, anybody who's a, as long as a Vaishnav doesn't need to be uh, a person who can come from any kind of background, whether he's a Sudra, Vaishya, Brahman, even a member of a family of a dog eaters. You know, many examples of gurus who have been from a very unusual backgrounds and they've delivered the disciples because they're Vaishnavs, you know. 
we must be aware of the above instruction that is ex expressed explicitly by Prabhupada in his purport. Chapter 18, we should note that Jayadev Goswami's 10 prayers, worshiping the incarnation of Lord Krishna contains his name in every stanza. So in, in the purport, Jayadev Goswami's 10 prayers, uh, and, and when you sing Narsinga Dev, prayers also, you know, it says Keshava Drita, Nara Hari Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare, and then Keshava Drita, Mina Sharira, Jai Jagat Isha Hare, and Keshava Drita, Vamana Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare. So these are uh, prayers we should learn, and when we recite, even if we remember these prayers, it will save us from dangerous situations we may face in life at times. As Lord Prahlad Maharaj, who felt helpless and called out to the Lord. So Prahlad Maharaj felt helpless, called out to the Lord. And the Lord appeared as Lord Nasingadev. Lord Ramachandra, although the Supreme Personality God had himself, underwent a series of tribulations because he accepted the wife Mother Sita, Lord, Ch Lord Ramachandra, underwent these austerities, of course, only to instruct us. Actually, he hadn't, he never has any reason to lament for anything because he doesn't have to lament for anything, he's a Supreme Lord. He not only rescued Sita from hands of Ravan, but also killed Ravan and all the members of his family. So when situations like this happen, when the Dharma and the principle and all these things are under threat, then one's duty is obviously to stand up for it and fight. You may have to kill like Ravan. <laughs> so protection is to be given. Um, one cannot attain Lord Krishna by any amount of wealth, followers or learning. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is controlled only by pure devotion. That's one of the instructions. Take example of Kova, Kolavesha Sridhara, who was a very sincere disciple of Lord Chaitanya, and how he was, as a poor man with no material possessions, became a most exalted devotee of the Lord. So in Lord Chaitanya's time, he says that one doesn't have to have exalt uh, to become a devotee. And you don't have to be a rich man, a poor man uh, can actually become an exalted devotee of the Lord. Uh, Srila Prabhupada instructs in the chapter 20, the demigods cannot accept the sacrificial offerings. They simply carry the offerings to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So when people worship demigods and they make all these different offerings, actually the demigods don't accept them. They have to carry these on to the Supreme Personality of Godhead because they are representing the Supreme Lord. As stated by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, Yasya Prasade Bhagavad Prasade. So in the similar way, since the Guru is a representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he carries to the Lord whatever is offered to him. So like to Prabhupada always would say that, you know, whatever you're offering, whatever I'm doing, you're actually offering to Krishna. I'm just the wire media and I'm doing it and you actually, whatever you're doing is because of mercy of my spiritual master. So he passes it on to his spiritual master. And in that way, ultimately to Krishna. And that's the proper understanding, proper guru, the bonafide guru would always uh, take that position. We have to have proper understanding when we worship demigods and a bonafide guru. So when we, we pay our obeisances to the Supreme, to the spiritual master, that is actually also paying respect the obeisances to the Supreme Lord, you know. Chapter 21, this chapter instructs us about how sun never deviates an inch. Um, it, it follows the orders of the Supreme Lord. Um, and it, it sticks to its uh, order that was given and the stays in the orbit because Krishna is saying here in the Bhagavad Gita, the Maya Dakshina Prakriti, which means in material nature carries out the orders of the Lord. 
and thus everything is maintained in an orderly way. So everything works in an orderly fashion. The Vedic astronomy explains herein, confirms that Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the Maya Dyakshana Prakriti, Suyate Sacharacharan, Hetu Nanena Kunteya, Jagadvipir Hurtate. The material energy or the material nature is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings. By its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So there is order in the spiritual world by the order of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead and material nature work together to maintain this great universe. And not only this universe, but also millions of other universes beyond this. So we know that even Rahu attempts to attack both the sun and the moon, which is mentioned in chapter 24. Um, but they are protected by Lord Vishnu and Rahu, um, which is the head of this serpent thing, <laughs> and Ketu, they are the two different uh, parts in the universe. And uh, they're afraid of Lord Vishnu's chakra. So we should take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Supreme Lord and his holy name especially the Maha Mantra, so Maha Mantra, sorry, this by the and uh, yeah, we'll find our protection there. When we think something like this, that I am identical with the Lord, or I can become the same as the Lord, or I can become the master here, this kind of false conception is one which, in which one thinks himself the supreme enjoyer is a kind of illusion due to our imperfect senses and wandering mind. As we are all prone to becoming illusion, misconception and forgetfulness, we have to take guidance from a spiritual master, a spirit, bona fide guru, <laughs> sadhus and shastras. So if we take, a, if we keep referring to sadhus, what the other sadhus are also saying, the shastras, what the shastras are saying, and then whatever the guru is also saying, all these things should be matching and tally you know, with each other. So as mentioned, this forgetfulness is created by Sankashan. He is sometimes called Tamasi. Tamasi ma jyoti gama. So we have to come out of ignorance and into the light of knowledge. Chapter 26, so many living entities are suffering in hellish conditions. And so are we. So chapter 26 was a description of all the different hellish planets and hellish conditions and the different sinful activities one may perform. It's not just those desires. Desires may be fulfilled by, and then Krishna may have to cry different type of bodies and all that. Then uh, Shatragna, meaning like the body or the field of activity. But pure devotees are always praying for these people who are suffering in hellish conditions. And they're asking the Lord to get him out of those sufferings. So when we feel the sufferings of others, and even when we are praying, these pray, uh, passing prayers and thoughts can give hope to living entities in hellish condition. So we don't understand, but sometimes in the deepest of the hells, suffering souls may be trying to reach out to anybody and saying, you know, if there is anyone out there, please help me. And uh, sometimes the help does come, but the Lord, you know, does try to help every individual. So don't want to find ourselves in hellish conditions. Just understand what sinful activities are. Try to avoid and hopefully. There we are. Those are the instructions of chapter, Canto 5. And... Uh, Going through very quickly. So, any questions or any comments? Hopefully, I've covered them very quickly. It was good, a good coverage. There's a lot there. <laughs> it was so much there, wasn't it? And I know. It's a lot there. It's good. Um, yeah. So, there's a lot of instructions to take, but Canto 5 was 
obviously amazing, different personalities, different yeah. teachings and the instruction that came through. But, you know, we, we are in uh, difficult times and uh, we have to learn to gradually transform our life if we can and uh, dedicate our life to some spiritual activity on the path to back home, back to Godhead. So mm -hmm. I'll stop share so you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. Nabi, thank Krishna you very Kamaji. much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much. You must have done a lot of research and reading. I know how it is, mm -hmm. but this is good. We got an overview of everything again. Very nicely done. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like uh, what you do, uh, Ule Kamaji. It's very important that that uh, yeah, that feedback and appreciation. Uh, thank you. Very good. Well, because I, I appreciate it, that's why I have to tell the person, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nice then we have to acknowledge that the person has put his effort in there. It yeah. doesn't come mm -hmm. on its own. So we should at least thank him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude is important. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to have to study the Bhagavatam <laughs> and, and to, yes, Prabhuji, you know, it, to it, give it a bit it of a pushes. thought and say what well, <laughs> it's good it, it, it pushes us here? Right? it pushes us to go and find and then it's not for people it's for ourselves first yeah. we purify ourselves we get the knowledge and then we share yeah. right yeah absolutely thank you absolutely <laughs> yeah, that's good no good. but it's the you know Nabi and the uh, Jenti Mataji has done wonderful. It's a good you know, team. Yeah. The slide and, and you know and dedicating the time and but well, you know we have the opportunity and the time now so yeah. <laughs> make use of it and uh, yeah. uh, you know dodge the virus as they say. <laughs> Okay, so, thank you, Nabi Haribo. Hare Krishna. It was very good. Anybody, any questions or any, any comments on any realizations on the pastime, on the uh, instructions? It was very good to have an overview. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots there. Too much to. Yeah. 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 And I'm reading the self realization book and. Um, the first chapter he said about serving, explaining that in that chapter, like we talked about yesterday. Yes, good, good. Mm -hmm. Our constitutional position. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so you're reading the science of self realization, huh? Self realization. Yeah. So the chapter where it says serving, I thought I just mentioned it, just came to me. That, yeah, mm -hmm. no, very good. Serving, very good. like each hand. Yeah, like, yes. Yeah. But yeah, Mon did a good job. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. You're Maybe next, you by the way, Aruna. <laughs> I'd like to one day. Really? Yes, one day okay. I'd like to do a session. But okay. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, you know, like in two, three weeks, if you like to prepare something, I'll, I'll be very happy for you to do something. Um, anyway, so have a thing. Have a thing. Maybe a bit more time. Have a yeah, thing. A bit more time, yeah. Okay. But, I'm, yeah. I'm leading her. <laughs> Yeah, we read the book together, me and Kanchan. So good. Okay. Uh, come on, Kanchan will come up with the one-liner. <laughs> and yeah. you have to fill the gaps. <laughs> well, that's how I am. Sorry. <laughs> one day I'll do a whole lecture you and surprise you. But your one-liners are very <laughs> powerful. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Very well. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Prabhu. A very good revision. Mm. Yes, revision for the exam. Is it on Monday? The <laughs> exam. Yes. Oh wow! Hey, yeah, it will be ready. Tell her to make it easy, please. That's <laughs> <laughs> a letter easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mataji, if uh, Navi is saying make it easy, can you imagine what our, we are, the learners feel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sick. <laughs> all the answers are correct according to us. <laughs> we'll give hints for all answers. 
good. Thank you. Oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, tomorrow, uh, would uh, last Ikadashi we listen to the Vishnu Sasanam? Would you like to listen to that again uh, tomorrow in the evening at eight o'clock? 